Welcome to the Redefine Hustle podcast. I am Lindsay Weiss, and I'm so excited. We have a special guest here today. Lindsay Gray is here. I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story and get to know her. She is a holistic life and wellness coach. She has a passion for social selling and breaking societal norms to show others there are ways to live in love. She's a mom of two boys, originally from Michigan, living in Chicago. And I'm so excited to hear more about your story and how you got into entrepreneurship. Welcome, Lindsay. Yay. Hi. I'm so excited to be here and I'm really excited to talk about all of this too, because even just sitting here, like as I'm hearing you talk and like thinking back to me 10 and a half years ago, uh, the girl I was then would just not be the same person that I am now. And that's one of my biggest passions, I think, in this whole entrepreneurship, like this whole social selling, this whole um kind of way to expand yourself and really become yourself and share all these different facets is like, as you're growing, and I wrote this down just as something like it's a constant reparenting, it's a constant reteaching and relearning and, and helping people to fly and be themselves and be bright and bold. Um, so I just love that I get to be here and share today. So 10 and a half years ago, like I said, if you would have told me that I was going to be an entrepreneur, I would not believe you. Um, I would not believe you at all. I didn't really know who I was. I was lost in, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, just that new world of, well, I got engaged. So I got married. And now that we're married, I guess we're having a baby. And because we're having a baby, now I'm a mom. And because I'm a mom, then that's what I am is I'm a mom. And I lost so many pieces of myself. And I feel like I've always been somebody that's pretty boldly myself, but it's funny how when you love passionately and you love deeply, no matter how bold of a person and how true and authentic and like, this is who I am that you are, when you have a kid and you become a mom, all of your passion and all of your boldness goes into that. And you just lose yourself. It's a transition. You have to try to balance all this stuff. And I was a hairstylist. I was actually struggling with an eating disorder. I was struggling with living paycheck to paycheck. I was struggling with figuring out how to make a marriage work that when I felt no fire in any areas of my life, I felt like I was just managing everything. Like I was just the, just the energy manager. So for me, the entrepreneur idea came up when I was actually looking for a health and fitness solution. And one of my friends that I would work out with at the gym actually said, you know what? You can do this at home because I needed to save money. So I wanted an at-home option. You can do this at home, but you can also do this in like, help your family out. Like you could, you could have a discount, you could earn some money back. And I was so confused by what she said, because, um, back then this was not really a big thing on social media. People were leaving like statuses on Facebook. They weren't like, it wasn't showing what everybody had to offer and being loud and proud. It was like literally just the start of social media, which the point of it is to be social. Right. So I was so confused as to what she was saying, but I remember that, this is, I think, the biggest thing for anyone as an entrepreneur. This is the biggest thing is that when you make the shift from not being an entrepreneur to being an entrepreneur, there's one thing that happens. And it's either something you watch or something you hear or something that somebody says. But it is this shift where all of a sudden somebody transfers a little bit of hope and belief that you have lost into you. And suddenly you're like, okay. My fire has been lit. Like they're literally the lighter. You're the wick. They light it. And you're like, all right, like you did that. Like, show me the way, right? Show me what to do. So I was really grateful because I leaned into that. Um, and I, I did a talk on this one time years ago. Um, and it was that like, I believe that we fight for what we want in our lives uh, because of two different reasons. One would be inspiration, we're inspired to. Another would be desperation, we're desperate to. And in that moment when this opportunity found me, I was both desperate 
and then I was inspired. So I ran with it and I was able to have a lot of success. Um, it brought me home after two and a half years and it's been 10 years now and it's been a huge blessing because of this business. I will say that it took me through a crazy journey of figuring out who I really am. I always thought I was myself, but it's interesting. Like when you have to dig deep, just all of the different things that you hit head on and you're like, why am I resistant to this? Why does this scare me? Why does this feel good? How do I make this better? And, 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 true entrepreneur mindset isn't, oh, I'm hitting a roadblock. I guess this isn't for me. It's, oh, I'm hitting a roadblock. How do I rise above it? What do, where do I have to grow to make this roadblock a pebble, make it go away, whatever it is, you know? So it took me through a really big roller coaster. My marriage actually got better. And then a couple kids later and just life and stress, um, it actually was entrepreneurship was the reason why I was able to find my voice and then also lovingly repurpose that marriage into an amazing co-parent opportunity and, um, and be able to stand on my own two feet. You know, I truly believe that I feel like so many people are stuck in these spaces where they don't feel like they feel like they're at home anymore, but they stay there because I how would I, how would I go? What would support me? You know, so entrepreneurship just has so many beautiful, scary, like launch pads, you know? And so for me, one thing that it really did well for me is the reason I'm sharing about how it took me on that journey in my marriage was it actually, that one decision to do this one health and wellness entrepreneur road trip that I went on adventure that I went on and I'm still on that one thing took me through such a transitional point in my life where to be honest with you I don't know where I would be if I never would have opened myself up to growing in the ways that I did um to you know hold the business coach others through it um and and kind of go through there but it also led me to a place where a few years ago I launched my own spiritual life coaching business that's been really exciting, helping women work through trauma, work through grief, figure out their clarity, help them become who they are, let go of all of the things that everybody tells you that you need to be and all the things that everybody tells you that you need to do and just stand confidently in your on your own two feet. Um, it's helped me to, well, I got certified in chakra healing and trauma therapy. And now I take on just a few clients a month in that, which is more of a passion project for me, but such a beautiful thing that I'd never be able to do had I never started that one, one thing 10 years ago. Um, and then of course, in the way that the world is now, Forbes magazine even says in 2023 that social selling and the digital platform is like the way to live a life of, and I don't want to say financial freedom in the way of like, that's what matters most, but I think everybody can feel it right here in their chest when they don't have to worry about looking at their bank account. And when they do, there's just a difference. It helps you live a little bit more comfortably. So multiple streams of income. Um, I think I have like probably six streams of income now. And as a single mom and as somebody who, um, has really, if I can sit here and just kind of like really quickly rewind through the last 10 years of my life and see like who I was and how I've transformed into, into now, it's just like, it's wild and the biggest blessing really. Yeah. <laughs> and I have been able to watch <laughs> for like quite a few years. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many, but yes. I've been able to watch this transform and I'm like so excited to just keep talking with you about all of this, um, all these fun things you've got going on. So, okay. So tell me a little bit more about when you're, um, coaching and you're teaching and you're sharing, um, with these, these people, tell us a little bit of, um, or give us some tips, if you will, on how you teach them to break societal norms, this mm -hmm. thing that you're very passionate about. Yeah. So I feel like, um, I was someone and I still am to this day. It takes me a lot of processing to be able to do something that I know will disappoint others. 
And I remember reading a book uh, quite a few years ago, and it is by Glennon Doyle. And I can't think of the name of it. Everybody loves it. Anyway, I forget what it is. Um, Untamed. Yes, Untamed. That's what it is. And I remember her saying that um, there was this this part in the book where she, there, she describes that there's this cheetah that is in captivity and they're watching this show that the cheetah's in and the cheetah's done. And so they let her into the side and she's pacing the outside of the enclosure and her daughter says look tabitha is remembering the wild and the woman that worked there said oh tabitha's never lived in the wild she doesn't know what the wild is this is her home she doesn't know any different and they watch and they see this cheetah like going around and they're like no she knows that she's meant for more right like she knows that that's what she's meant for and i actually have a cheetah on a tattoo because of it, because that moved me in such a way, because I felt like my whole life, I have just not wanted. And I got this from that book as well. I was so quick to abandon myself because I didn't want to abandon others. So my fear of abandoning others and how it would feel, I wouldn't abandon myself, which led me in a life of choosing what I thought I was supposed to choose to make my grandparents and my parents and everybody happy and let them love me the most, love me, love me, like be proud of me, accept me. Um, I just didn't want to disappoint anybody. And that obviously comes from my childhood somewhere, but I didn't want to disappoint anyone. So I just did what I always thought I was supposed to do until I got to the point where I realized that we are living in a system that tells you this is this is when you're born and this is when you go to these doctor visits and this is what happens at them. And this is when you go to preschool and this is when this is the age you start kindergarten and this is when you go to school and then after school you go to college and then after college you go to, you know, you get a job and then after you get a job, you work there and you stay and then you're married for X amount of years and the longevity of your marriage is what tells you if it's successful or not. Right. There's like these just certain societal norms that in my small town were very loud to where when I wanted to exit my marriage, I went through crazy anxiety. Because I must be wrong for feeling this way, you know, and so for me, I really try to help people um, understand, like even now, my kids, I homeschool my kids and we were doing um, an, a welcome back to school activity yesterday and we did this collage and I wanted them to draw a picture of what they want to be when they grow up and they both drew a picture of a YouTube symbol. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what do you want to do? They're like, we want to be YouTubers. And I just thought about like how so many other people and me 10 years ago would have said, well, that's not a real job. Let's pick a real job. But it can be a real job. Yeah, anything, sure anything these days can be, if you have passion, if you have fire, if you put the energy there, it can deliver you what you want in life. And I think my biggest thing that I love to just help people understand is like, um, there's no, like, your body is what you need to trust the most. Your body is always going to tell you if you're safe. It's always going to tell you if you're happy and you can try and try and try. But when you are tired and you are done, it is okay to shift. It is okay to say, I don't want to work a nine to five and I'm going to build a network marketing company. It is okay when you're in a network marketing company to say, I want to put my all here, but I also want to do all of these things too. It's okay when you have your kids at school that you want to bring them home and homeschool. There's nothing wrong with the homeschooling. There's nothing wrong with them going to school. Like, I feel like um, my biggest thing, if I could like gift the world, the biggest gift would be to help everybody stop taking things. There's a book everyone should read. It's called, um, oh, geez. Yep. I'll get there. I'll tell you what it's called, but it's called the four agreements. There we go. It's called the four agreements. It's so good. It's don't make assumptions. Always do your best. Be impeccable to your word and don't take things personal. So if you can always do your best, be impeccable to your word, don't take things personal and not make assumptions of other people and live your life doing what makes you happy. Like that's just 
can you imagine, like, we're just cheering everybody on and feeling good and just rising in the places that, that were meant to rise, you know? So, um, breaking societal norms, like really dropping into reparenting ourselves. I feel like a lot of us just, well, this is just the way I am. Well, I just can't do that because I'm just shy or I'm just this, or I'm just scared, or I just don't know social media, or I just don't. And it's like, you have the ability to reparent yourself there. You have the ability to grow there. It's just the, uh, it's just waiting for that person to either put the hope and belief into you or you going outside of yourself to find that, right? Um, People also, a big social norm, I think right now is like the busier you are and the more things you say yes to, it's almost like there's this trophy for, well, now I'm driving my kid here and then I'm going to go pick them up from here. And there's just so much that we have to do that we're afraid to say no or set boundaries or disappoint others. And this is funny because this is actually the third time that you and I were going to have this where the other, there was one time I think you had to be like, I'm so sorry. I'm not able to do it. There was another time I did. And both times we're all like, great. I love you. When's the next opportunity, you know? And, um, so really helping people with boundaries and like self-love. I think a lot of people in the past generation, we've really looked at self-love, like when people are setting boundaries and being careful with their time and their energy and their managing, a lot of times people have misconstrued that as selfish, mm-hmm. where it's not selfish. It's needed. We're humans and we're not robots and we only have so much energy and so much love and so much patience and, you know, mm-hmm. um, So allowing people, if you want to follow the system of life that's set up for us, then follow it and love it. But if you don't, that's okay that you don't either, you know? And then um, I think that's pretty much it with the breaking of the societal norms is just allowing people. And a lot of times here's the thing is that the societal norms, the pressure that is put on us when we are trying to break them and when we are fearful of breaking them is not actually coming from outside of us. It's coming from inside of us. It's coming from the beliefs we've created in the lives we've lived and what we've seen as we've been, you know, so helping people to just like give themselves permission. I I'm assuming that something like you work through, um, shifting the beliefs in your coaching. Yes. Like changing the story, the thought model and stuff like that. Okay. I, one of the things I wrote down, like when you first started with the YouTuber, cause like my kids are the same. I have yeah. one who's created a channel and he's doing great. And I'm like, okay, we need to monetize the channel now. Anyways, I wrote down who made the rules where it was like, you have to do this and you have to do this yeah. and you have to do this. Like, this is the standard we need to meet. And I, I wrote that down. I was like, so who, who did come up with the rules? And right. then I wrote down um, as you were walking through your, your tips, I was thinking, how free do you feel in this space today after all this time, after all this work you've been doing? Mm. Yeah. So that's a question to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually just said to my best friend the other day with like tears in my eyes, that I have never felt more free and more peaceful and more joyful in my entire life because I just haven't. Right. It's such a cool space right now, isn't it? Yes. It's It's like what you want to love, what you want to love on and share. You do, you get the people that you meet, the positivity around it, the acceptance. We are in a time right now in 2023, there's been a shift where I feel like in the past, there's been a little bit of a questionable cloud over this space, right? Like, is it real? But can people be successful? But this, but this, but this, there's lots of questions. And that's a lot of fear. And just like, it's not, it was outside of the norm where now it's been around for a while, right? The social selling, the digital marketing, all of these things, the different avenues, the different income um, producing like opportunities where there's been this shift in the last like four or five months where I feel like it used to be something that people were like, oh, 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 where now people are like, yeah, oh, I love this. Oh, what are you doing now? It's, it's more curiosity. It's positivity. It's like, I'm watching so many women and men and families be blessed immensely in the financial part, but also in the happiness and the joy and like they're glowing and they're happy and they're brighter 
all because of the energy here, whether it's a monetary energy or a transfer of an energy exchange with people, you know? It's such a cool, I feel like we're living in such a cool time. It's mm-hmm. like such a, it's so cool. I was, I, I see that in you, you can see the glow in you because of all the work you've been doing. Um, and so I was like, I just so curious, like how free you feel. Cause you can see like the stress that you had many years ago and now you're like lifted, gone, or you just, I mean, stress never really goes away, does it? But we just figure out how to like really use tools and work through it, you know? Well, and a lot of the stress that we carry is stress that we can put that luggage down and walk away from it, but we choose not to because of social conditioning, social norms, expectations. And so when you can really drop into yourself and like, and, and, give yourself permission to, this is my biggest thing. I think a lot of people don't allow themselves to take certain opportunities because what will my grandparents think? What will these people think? What will this person say? And I constantly just have to tell myself, and I've had to tell myself a lot, like not anymore, but I had to for a while. Like that person doesn't live my life. That person doesn't live in my home. That person doesn't pay my bills. That person doesn't, their opinion matters to me because I love them so much, but two things can be true at one time they can feel that way and it can bother me and I can also choose what's best for me yep those two things can exist you know it's so good yeah pretty exciting isn't it yeah so okay what um let me ask you I'm going to jump around what Mm -hmm. advice or actionable steps would you give to someone looking to get started in social selling, looking to get started, who maybe doesn't have a following, who is just completely new to social media. I don't know if that's even possible at this point, but you never know. Right. Um, (laughs) Right. Um, I would say that first of all, like obviously pick a business that aligns with you, something that you've had a transformation in, something that you really believe in, something that there's passion behind that is almost like target to many women where you can go, you can be so excited. You just share it naturally because you love it so freaking much. So it's not just, this is a good opportunity. I'm going to jump into this. It's like, it aligns with your beliefs. You love it. You're using it. You, you, you're happy, right? It's, it's something that is exciting to you. So definitely picking the right avenue to start. I would also say if you're just starting out, there's so many shiny objects right now and you can have as many of them as you want, but you should start with one. Get your feet wet, get comfortable, and then you can layer in multiple streams of income. Um, But really kind of just focusing on one and getting that off the ground and getting your feet wet and getting comfortable, I think is the best. Number three So I would say is um, to pick one platform because I do think, well, maybe not. I would say, honestly, I think Instagram and Facebook are still just the ways to go. A lot of people get a lot on TikTok. People don't really love me that much on TikTok. I try, but Facebook is where people just love what I have to say. Every platform has a different personality. Every platform likes different things. Facebook loves hearing about my emotional trauma. (laughs) They love my like, screw men and I'm a strong single woman mentality. They like my, I used to have dreads. I don't anymore, but they loved my dreads and they love my tattoos and they love to cheer me on, right? Facebook loves me. Instagram, they're all right. They can do with me. They can do without me. TikTok's kind of like, eh, sometimes you're cool, but a lot. And I put the same content and everything. So that's one thing is I would really like figure out where do you thrive? Where do you see things that you like the most? And then that's probably going to be the place that you really get a lot of traction in, in this space. Um, I focus majority of my stuff where people are already at my table. On Facebook, I get a lot of traction still to this day. It's how I built my whole business 10 years ago. And funny thing is it's still where I get everything, where I know other people who it's Instagram for them, other people, it's TikTok. It's all about your personality. And the biggest way I think to figure that out is like, where do I like to hang? Mm -hmm. If this is where I like to hang, then this is where probably I'm going to be more accepted, right? Um, 
I think the other one would be that once you figure all of that out, getting really like just knowing that it's going to take a little bit of homework, go on YouTube and search how to make a reel, go on YouTube and search how to make a TikTok, go on YouTube and search, um, or even just, I think there's like really some cool tools that are out there now for helping you with even like figuring out how to word what you want to say. I don't use any of those, but some people too, I think it's like chat GPT maybe or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But for me, I would just say coming, like just speaking from the heart, not worrying about the words right now. If I could tell you what catches on social media, it's happiness, joy, confidence, and reels. You know, so if you can master kind of the idea of like, what is my message? Who am I? Um, You're going to say, well, I'm a mom and I don't know what else. And I believe you because I felt that way once before, but there's so much more. So, you know, work with your mentor or coach and really figure out what that is. And then just really play around on your platform with, um, with being as bold as you can. I think like in the past, curiosity marketing was a big thing. Be, yeah. don't share what you're using, yep. whatever, where now it's like, no, put it right in front of my face and let me see how happy you are. And then tell me all about it. You right. know? So, yep. And you, you picked up like a really large following just doing reels. Um, and do you feel like, so to me, if I were to tell you from the outside looking in, um, I saw somebody just, uh, I mean, it really is kind of like the, um, description of, the work you did with the, um, process in be, I, w- I would say becoming a coach, working through all of that, probably still working through it. Cause I know it continues on in life, but mm-hmm. um, like the glow up, like started to take place and it was like, people caught on. Are you content and happy having this big following? Is it, well, like, how are you feeling about it? Are you like, Oh, this was like, is it good for business? Are you, and it all was reels and just, yeah. just coming out. So I think I went from like 400 followers to 140,000 followers on Facebook in like six months by just literally posting one reel a day. Like, and it wasn't even, it was just funny stuff, my sense of humor, whatever. Um, And it was overwhelming to me at first because I felt like uh, it was a lot of dopamine (laughs) for me because I loved the attention. I was also like in the peak of like my separation and divorce. So I think I got like, caught up a little bit in the busyness of all of the people who just want a small talk. It does get overwhelming. But once I learned boundaries there and I only open up messages from women, I only open up messages that, and like when I do open them up, if it's just like a small talk thing, I'll kind of move on. But like, I really kind of pick out who I want to who I'm answering because it has something to do with what I want to discuss. And I try my best to answer the rest, but um, I do find that it's beneficial because I will say that I think that when we enter this space, our hope is that we'll make one post or one reel, or we'll say one thing and a bunch of people will be like, Ooh, me. But that just doesn't happen right away. You have to have patience. You have to realize that in this type of thing, what you're doing now, you will see the benefits of in three months. Will you get some success along the way? Yes, but you'll start seeing a huge shift after 90 days, right? Like as your consistency of showing up is there. People start knowing and liking and trusting and seeing you more and repetitive. And that's what really kind of um, creates more, more, more momentum. So for me, I will say now, the thing that I love about it with the boundaries that I've had, I wouldn't like it if I didn't have boundaries, but I have them. I don't open certain messages and I just, you know, keep my, I use social media very much as work. I go in, I do my work and I get out. So I have boundaries on myself too. Um, But I'll say that I was, I do love it because I do feel like when I go and I share something, it doesn't hit empty ears. People respond, people interact. And as somebody who's been doing this for 10 years and used to get crickets for many years, even though I was successful when I would post and when I would share things, I'd still get crickets where now I get responses, I get interaction. And sometimes I'll just put on there like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Who wants to join me? And like people respond. And I, and that, um, really helps keep my fire lit 
for where I am in the space to keep going. You know, it's, it's reassurance that you're doing the right thing, that you're showing up, that people are like, oh, hey, I see you. Yeah. I, um, while, while we're here, I have this last question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it links kind of back to what you just said. So, um, I, I wanted to know what inspires you to keep showing up in this space, to stay consistent with these multiple different businesses you're doing, um, and now like you've expanded a little bit upon that with the followers, but I'd love to hear, um, what inspires you to keep going. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing that inspires me to keep going is the amazing lifestyle that I get to live because of it. I get to, my kids get to wake up when they want to. We get to homeschool. We get to go on tons of trips on the di- on the daily if we want. We don't have, we don't live on anyone's timeline but our own. And that's the type of life I like. <laughs> So that really inspires me to show up even when it's inconvenient, even when I'm tired, even when I don't want to, because I never want to have to change our lifestyle unless my children were to say, mom, we want to go to school. Then I would change our lifestyle for them. They don't want to. They love our lifestyle too. But um, I think that would be the number one thing is like I get up and I look around and as a single mom, I'm also the sole provider. I don't have another income. So this is my partner. All of these incomes are my partner, you know, these different streams. And so to show up and to share and to get out of my head and say, all right, Lindsay, just go. You know, there's a part of me that I'm inspired because of what it's given me. I'm inspired because I want to give other people this because I see so many people that want this lifestyle and I want to give it to them because once upon a time, I didn't think I wanted this. And I only decided and realized I wanted it when I made enough money to walk away from hairstyling. But before that, if you'd have asked if I ever wanted to do this lifestyle, I would have said no, but only because I thought I couldn't have it. And that was an aha moment for me. It's like, you know, so many people do want it. They just, maybe we don't tell ourselves we want it because it's not what we can have anyway. So um, the kids continuing the lifestyle um, and helping other people be able to have that too. That is probably my biggest thing now for a long time, it was creating it for me. And now I just want to create it for, with other people so that they can, they can have, we, we are here one time. That's right. You know, I hope people listening are super inspired to keep showing up, keep doing their thing. Okay. This has been so good, but I want Uh, you to tell people where can they come find out, find you, where are you hanging out? Yes. Well, so I hang out a lot on Facebook. (laughs) Um, Lindsay Gray, it's G-R-A-Y and in what a parentheses Fox, but I also am on Instagram at Lindsay L. Gray. Um, And then, and that's an E-Y, Mm L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, L-G-R-A-Y, just to, just to let you know there. Um, I am on TikTok and other things, but my hangouts are Instagram and Facebook. And I do have a website, soulfullylindsay.com. Okay. And we'll put that in the show notes. I'll have you um, get that over there and we will put that. So if you are interested in anything Lindsay's got going on, you can reach out to her and she'll open your message. I promise. No, I'm yes, I will. <laughs> Just say, please open this. Yeah, please <laughs> open, open it. It's important. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being here. I greatly appreciate this. This was so much fun um, having you here and we will see you guys back next week. Awesome. Thanks, Lens.